Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today we are installing the QB Core framework, which has been highly requested across the channel for a while. Um, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe. Let's hit 10,000 subs. Anyway, let's get straight into this. So um, if you don't know, we are going to be using TX Admin for this. We're going to be creating a fresh server just for the QB Core. Um, rather than installing everything individually and manually, TX Admin is going to give us the ability to install it very quickly and um, pretty much with as little hassle as possible, which is terrific. Um, so the things we're going to need for this, we're going to need the server artifacts. We'll download these in a moment. We are going to need our key master key. If you've never used key master before, um, you will need to get a key. If you have an existing key, you're going to use your existing key and you are going to need a database. So I have done this install for the database quite often. I'm going to install a clip of how to install this database and how to start it. And then we'll go over creating the user and everything when we reach that step in this tutorial. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. This shouldn't take that long compared to the other resources and stuff we've installed. This is pretty much automatic. We're just going to download, launch, fill out all the information it wants, and then we are pretty much done. So before I go ahead and download um, these, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it just QB core or whatever else you want to name it. And in here, I'm going to create a just a new folder called like server or something like this. And this is where I'm gonna download not the latest recommended version, but the latest just um, numbered version here. The reason this is um, the way it is, is because the latest recommended is not the version that TX admin wants. I don't exactly know why they haven't updated the latest recommended yet, but since they haven't, you gotta do the latest build. And then you're just gonna drag this into your server folder here. I think I dragged it into the wrong place. I did. So let's just drag all this into the server folder. And once you see all this in here, we're pretty much good to go. What we're going to do is we're going to double click on that fxserver.exe file. It's going to start up for the first time. It's going to be like, hey, it's ready. Go to this and it's going to auto fill that key or pin that it sent here and go ahead and press link account. And then once your account's linked, it's going to be like, hey, do you want to authorize TX admin to connect to your 5M forums account? Go ahead and press continue. If you don't have a 5M forums account, it's going to prompt you to create one. Um, so you won't even be able to do key master without a 5M forums account. So it's just making sure you do that. Then it's going to ask for a backup password. This is going to be whatever you want your backup password to be. I would make it something secure that you will remember in case you need to get access to it. Go ahead and press save here. And then it's going to be like, welcome BJ to development. Um, you are just going to use the default profile, which is fine. We're going to type a server name. I'm going to say QB core BJHD dev or something along the lines of that. Whatever you want to say for this is fine. This is going to be whatever server name. You can obviously change it, all that good stuff. Next, this is where um, we're actually going to select QB bus or QB core. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to popular template and we're going to go ahead and do the QB core here. Go ahead and click that. And then we're just going to leave this blank. So this is where it's going to install. All your data is going to be in your TX data folder, which is inside of whatever folder you previously created. So if we go back to this overall folder, you can see TX data right here. So let's go ahead and press save. And then it's going to be almost there. Let's go to the recipe deployer. Inside the recipe deployer, you can see all of the things it's going to install, where it's all going to be ending up, all that good stuff. Press next. Then this is where you're going to go ahead and get your license key. And if you click show high database options, enter all of your database info. So let's go ahead and get our license key first. Since I have an existing license key, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of them for whatever one I'm currently using. So I have a home PC license key. I'm going to go ahead and copy the key and I'm going to paste it in my server deployer here. Go ahead and just let it there. If you don't already have a key, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through the key um, creation by clicking register what you need if you need to make a new key. So if you need to make a new key, if you've never done this before, you'll go ahead and click register. It's gonna ask you for a label. You'll just name this home PC, my PC, um, whatever you wanna name it, cause it's your home device. It's gonna ask you for a host name. And if it doesn't have a selection saying home host, you'll select other and type in home host yourself. And then it's gonna ask you for your IP. To get your IP, you're just gonna type in what is my IP for address online and it will go ahead and tell you what your IP4 is at any of the links located here. So I'm gonna click this one and you can see my public IP4 address is this. So I'm gonna take this and I would deploy it over on Keymaster. Click go and it will give you your key. If, if you receive an error, error when you're doing this, like um, cannot connect to the server or cannot reach that IP address, make sure you port forward your 5M ports um, just to make sure that everything's being installed correctly 
and it can actually reach key master directly so make sure to do that we're go anyway. ahead and install our database and we're going to do this using exam the link in the top of the description just go ahead and download the latest file from here for your windows version um and that's just going to be the top link for me on this screen and when you download it it's going to download an exe file which you're just going to execute just like you normally do with any other exe file and we're actually going to install this into the disk pc folder um if you already have this installed great go ahead and open and use your existing one but if you don't just go ahead and go through the installer like i am here you'll ask you for administration perms and just say yes because it will be installing things to that disk um, and what it's going to be installing is you're going to go ahead and install mysql apache and php my admin this will let you see everything and you can uncheck everything on the little installer except for those three you need apache mysql and php my admin those are the only three you actually need installed and then you're just going to go ahead and click next once you make sure those have been checked you can uncheck the other ones if you want and then you're just going to make sure it's using the default path c dash dash um the Apache folder. In my case, I changed it in the footage just because I was uh, had two copies installed. But if you have one, just go ahead and install that where it normally is. You can uncheck read more, learn more about all that, and just keep clicking next until it starts actually installing. It could take a little while to install depending on your uh, system status and everything. And that folder will appear. And what will happen is at the end of the installation, it will open up a little GUI you'll see in a few moments. But if it doesn't open that up for you, you're going to go into that installation folder and you're going to find the control panel. Uh, exe file and just double click that and it will open up for you whenever it's done installing which is great all right so now that it is done installing all you're going to have to do is where it says apache and mysql go ahead and click start um, and it will take a second to load up as long as there's no conflicting ports or anything it will start up almost instantly and then you're just underneath uh, where it says mysql you're just going to click that admin button and that admin button will actually take you to your php my admin page um, it will be located at localhost slash php my admin um, a few different times it could change depending on your ports and everything, but by default it will be at phpMyAdmin slash or localhost slash phpMyAdmin. Go ahead and get our database details. So we're going to open up my localhost phpMyAdmin here. Um, it is obviously going to run on localhost. My database name and database password I'm going to change from the default. Just as a security aspect of it, you should never be running anything on root. I would like to point that out. You should never be running anything on a root login that has all permissions never do that that's a security nightmare and a lot of people on our esx tutorial ran into problems with this because they just didn't know how to use sql properly and they were running they were just using root with no password that is a very big security risk do not do that always create a unique database username and password for everything you do it is just standard practice so inside of our database system here we have our user account so i'm going to add a new user account and I, my username i'm just going to name QB user or something like that. And my password is going to be whatever I want it to be. I'm going to type it as password. Obviously, all these details have been changed. My IP is going to be blurred out on this. Um, and then I'm going to retype this password here, password. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, create and not even grant any privileges for this user. What I'm going to name is I'm going to press the create database and grant privileges to that user only. There's gonna be no other permissions it has on any of our other databases. This way, if you have a different user and a different database, you're not gonna run into problems with this. So our username is gonna be QB. Our password is gonna be password or whatever you set it to. And our database name is gonna be whatever it created for you. So in this case, it created a lowercase QB user database. So I'm gonna do QB user, just like that. And that name, name of the database is going to be automatically replaced if you don't already have it. Um, so make sure all data in there is going to be wiped and erased. So make sure it um, doesn't, by default, have any data in it. All right, run recipe. It will go in and save. It's going to load and take a little time. You can see the window here is going while the window here is running as well. So you can just keep your main window open while it does this. It will take a little time. All right, so once it's completed, you can see we now have our resources and our server.cf uh, CFG file inside of our Q, uh, TX data folder and in the QB fam uh, core framework folder here. And then you're just going to press next. And then it's going to say to configure anything you may want in here other than what it actually says already. Press save and run server. 
And then once it starts up, we will know everything is started correctly. There we go. It looks like everything has started up correctly. And you join just like any other server. You're just going to join with your local host if you're on local host or port forward and join with your IP4 if you are inviting friends to your server. Obviously, in the end, I always recommend um, not port forwarding and getting a VPS or something to run these. Um, but you can obviously do it however you want to do it. Um, but just make sure to tape any security info uh, confidential. Don't leak your server keys. Don't give away keys. Don't share stuff like that. It just doesn't work well. Anyway, we are in game here. We're going to click on the QB, our test server, our local server. And then it's just going to be um, checking if we're banned. It's going to request our server permissions. It's going to download all of the resources and let us connect to the server here. Um, so obviously we're connecting now. And once we're in, we should have all of our Q, uh, QB core stuff set up automatically. We shouldn't need to really do anything. And now you can install and configure and figure out all those resources, however you want it to do it, um, whenever you are doing stuff. So there we go. We are retrieving characters, validating characters, and you can create new characters. Let's create a new character, first name, last name, whatever you want, enter your date of birth, uh, 5748 apparently, select, confirm, go ahead, do your thing. Um, choose where you want to live all this good stuff so you can see everything is working right off the bat all the base resource stuff is working right off the bat we didn't have to do anything um you can customize everything you can leave your apartment all that good stuff so i'm just going to confirm the default leave my apartment ring the doorbell all is possible so now we are in game we have our framework loaded everything is working how it should and if you have any questions, make sure to go ask the research author. It just took us just over 10 minutes to get a full server working. So it shouldn't be that difficult for all of you at home. Hopefully this did help you out. If it did, like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great rest of your... One thing I forgot to showcase um, when I was originally recording this video is all of the tables also did import correctly. So you can go ahead and modify these to whatever you need. If you have in the info in here, like the bands would show up, all the bank accounts would show up any of your apartments would show up who owns them so this is my citizen id when i logged in um, any players will show up so here is all my info how much cash i have so you can obviously modify this to whatever you want um, to change those values for the player um, so hopefully this did help you out um, hopefully it's easy for you and hopefully you enjoyed i will see you next time Sleep with the doors unlocked